To make this really clear for all of you, I want to share with you an example of how I had to guide a conflict last week without having to make the judgment calls. My seven-year-old came running into the kitchen crying because her four-year-old cousin V had smacked her on the head with a big flag. And she was in full-on blame mode. You know, she said, V hit me on the head with her flag on purpose and started crying. Ah! And then V comes running in. No, I didn't. I was waving it and she walked too close to me. And my daughter said, no, she did it on purpose. She just went Oh, and she hit me because I wouldn't walk in her parade with her. And V is down there going, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Right. So here we had the four year old in self-protective mode, denying, deflecting um, and minimizing, trying to minimize the incident. And then the seven year old is over here feeling attacked, closed off, blaming, crying and looking to be vindicated. Now, my knee jerk reaction might have been to go all logical and solution focused, right? With words like now, you know, it's not okay to hit. That's not nice. You know, use your words if you want her to play with you. And then to my daughter, I might have said, you know, you're okay. She's little. She didn't mean it. You know, why don't you just play with her for a few minutes with her flag? And then she won't keep bothering you. Then she'll leave you alone. All right. Whoa, back up. Did you see what just happened there? That exchange, that might seem reasonable, even negligible, but really what I just did there with those words was assign blame, judge, I dismissed the experience of both children, and then I denied them the opportunity to strengthen their problem solving skills by just telling them what should happen. Can you think if every time you felt stuck or mad, someone came in and told you how it was all your fault and then told you what you should do instead, would that actually help you build your skills or be a better person? Probably not. So what can we do? We can reframe and reflect what we see in here. So what I did was I said to ML, you know what I'm hearing is that you were hit with the flag and it hurt and you're feeling very upset about that. And my daughter said, yes. And then I turned to my four year old niece and I said, and it sounds like you were very excited to show ML how you walked in the parade and you were waving your flag and you just wanted her to pay attention to you. But the four year old said, no, I didn't hit her on purpose. I didn't hit her on purpose. And ML started screaming, yes, you did. So I said, okay, ML, it sounds like you want V to acknowledge that you were hurt. And ML said, yes, she hit me very hard. And I said to V, it sounds like when you were so excited and you waved that flag all around, you accidentally hit your cousin on the head. Maybe you were just really excited and you had something to share with her. And then V hung her head sheepishly and she said, yes. So you see what I did? I didn't reaffirm logic. They know that hitting isn't okay. And I didn't want to make a lesson out of their mistake because that's only going to close them off in defense of themselves. No one wants to think of themselves as less than or bad. You know, we can't look inside if we are left feeling guilty about ourselves or our actions. But we can still ask kids to take responsibility for their actions without making them feel bad about themselves. So I said to V, V, look at this flag. It has a very pointy end. Feel that, right? And she felt the tip. What do you think? It's pokey, she said. Yes, it could hurt someone if we aren't careful. I know you were, you were so excited and you didn't mean to hurt ML. You love her. And V said, yes, I love her very much. And then my daughter turned and, and then the real issue came out. And she said, I know you love me, V. And then she said, V was just upset because we were going to go to the pool and she was afraid that we were going to leave her in the baby pool and not play with her. But we decided that we would play with her in the baby pool first and then go into the big pool so that it would be fair. And I said, you know what? I think that might make V feel very much like she is included. What do you think, V? And she said, yes, let's go get ready for the pool, Maya Luna. And then off they went. And not only did the underlying need that was the root cause of V's aggression come out, which was her feeling of being not included, when that was acknowledged, they were both able to reflect and resolve their differences on their own. I just moderated. There were no forced I'm sorry's. Nobody was admonished for having a bad moment. And the bond between everybody was strengthened in that moment. And we know that when bonds are strengthened, it leads to more having more influence in the long run. Thank you.